just a few announcements to say. Next week we're going to be having dodgeball. So on Monday it's going to be 8th and 9th versus 10th. And then on Tuesday it'll be 11th versus 12th. Wednesday it'll be teachers versus, or sorry, sorry, it'll be winners. Yeah, and then Friday will be teachers versus, every, yeah. And then um, Model UN, we have a meeting tomorrow. Be there because Josh Ray's going to be there. And that's very special. And I think that's <laughs> Good morning, I hope you enjoyed your three-day weekend. It's a special week. Thursday, campus is closed. But, but notice, I didn't, notice I didn't say school is closed because your forward-thinking faculty has embraced something called the internet and haiku, and we will be offering for you learning opportunities. Learning opportunities on Thursday. Campus is closed. Campus is closed, but school is still in session, so check in with your teachers today and tomorrow about their expectations for you on Thursday. What will we be up to on Thursday? We are inviting local area librarians to come to campus and meet with us. Local area middle school English teachers to come to campus and meet with us. And we are also going to be in a workshop with Critically, uh, internationally acclaimed clinical psychologist and parenting expert, Dr. Wendy Mogul. Uh, Dr. Mogul helps parents and educators learn how to raise resilient teenagers, and we're hosting a special event at Cabrillo College Thursday night for parents that would like to attend as well. But I just wanted to say something about this idea of resiliency. This is the time of year when many of you start to feel and some of you start to tell us that school is becoming quite difficult. And that's okay. What we know is that that difficulty means that you are learning. When you struggle, you struggle because you are learning something new. And that's a good thing. So have faith in yourself. If you feel that you are in sort of a low point right now, know that there is a, a high point coming down the road for you. Know that we're here to help you. Know that we want you to tell us what you need. On the other side of the challenge awaits a stronger, more resilient, smarter you. And that's what we're all here for. That's, that's the whole point of being in school at a place like yours. Thanks. because I know there's a lot to do today, about the number of reports I'm having from your parents and from you yourselves about growing levels of anxiety. So as you're in the midst of this challenge, relying on yourself, believing in yourself that you will get to the other side, and as Mr. Raymond said, acquire the new knowledge that comes through struggle, and challenge, and meeting that challenge, I'd like to remind you of some important practices that you can do for yourself. And the reason that I, I joked when I came back from my sabbatical that I was setting up these meditation um, periods because that would keep me sane. But in addition to that, the reason that I am offering these is because more and more we're finding through fMRIs and through all kinds of other studies and research that mindfulness meditation increases our resiliency, decreases our stress and anxiety levels. And now they're starting to find, and, and I hate to feed into the York ethos on this, but we're starting to find as well that you can increase your ability to learn and your performance on those ridiculous things called standardized tests by as much as 30%. So think about raising your standardized test scores by 30% because you are practicing mindfulness meditation for 
in an intensive way for two weeks and then following that up every day. It makes you a healthier person, a more resilient person, a less stressed out person. So I invite you to come at 2 o'clock today. Those of you who have free, freeze then. Um, come at 2 o'clock today. We will be meeting today and tomorrow and Friday at 2 o'clock for a 15-minute period of meditation. That alone can really help you out. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I have some really exciting news about the TEDx York School event that's going to be happening on April 1st and going to be live streamed and recorded for you all to uh, participate in. Um, but I don't, I'm going to skip that, share the, that news with you next time because we're really tight on the time. But what I do want to share with you is that there are a few spots for students to join in the event that night. It's going to be a very exclusive small intimate event, but we do have applications for you all if you want to participate in TEDx York School on April 1st. The application either is now or will be very soon online at york.org slash TEDx app. York.org slash TEDx app if you want to apply to actually join us in the event April 1st. Every year about this time we have the Winter Arts Festival where the band, orchestra and jazz band perform and we put up a display of some of your artwork. And every year about this time, as many of you know, is the Science Fair. <laughs> this year, because these are such great events, we want everyone to really enjoy them and because we want to get the Science Fair out of the confines of the library, we are having the Winter Arts and Science Festival. Awesome. On Saturday, in the gym, starting at 2 o'clock, all your science fair projects will be up, and some of the science teachers will be there to talk about how wonderful you all are. There will be a display of, of artwork from many of you who are taking art classes, and then starting at 3 o'clock will be the winter instrumental concert. The band, the orchestra, and the jazz band will be performing. And of course there will be food and goodies, compliments of the parents club, so you can get there too and look at the science projects and the art, enjoy the concert at 3 till about 4, and then be about an hour after that, there'll be, for another hour, there'll be food, and you can continue to look at the art projects and the science projects. Saturday, 2 o'clock, in the gym, the Winter Arts and Science Festival. Do this day, uh, in this, uh, on this day, and I also would like you to do compare, comparison to compare with your our holiday here, and uh, to make a connections. What is this, what uh, what we are doing in common, and uh, what what's the different? Yeah, you let uh, use this time to think about this, okay? And also each year. There's an animal represent each year. So what the animal represent this year? Yeah, very, very good. Goat. This goat. Oh, 
sheep and the black sheep. <laughs> represented by one Chinese characters. This, what's this product? Yang. Yang. Very, very good. Yang. <laughs> Yang. Yang represent, well, this all have meaning there, uh, peace. So let's wish we have a peaceful and a happy new year. I want everybody and the Chinese student from China and all Chinese class students and whoever you know how to say Happy New Year in Chinese, let's say all together, okay? I say one, two, three in Chinese, yi, er, san. I want everybody, okay? Yi, er. Ancient Japanese legends show that dragons brought Japanese characters to the Shinto temples, introducing writing to the land. The easiest way to tell apart the Chinese, Korean, and the Japanese dragons is to look at their feet. Classically, Chinese dragons are always painted with five toes, Korean dragons with four, and Japanese dragons with three. The myths on why this is vary from China to Japan. China believes that all dragons came from China, and the further they get away from China, the more toes they lose. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese people stubbornly believe that all dragons came from Japan, 
Japan, and the further they get away from Japan, the more toes they grow through evolution or something. Both cultures are very, very convinced that they are right. So if you come across a three-toed dragon, it's probably Japanese. Have a nice evening.
gala that's coming up in a couple weeks. And so, yeah, you guys should all come during your free periods or during lunch, or like any time that you're free, come into the gym. Um, no, no, no. Just <laughs> you can, okay, you can, if you want to help out, you can see my mom in the advancement office. Just walk right in. She's the first office there. Because we don't know. <laughs> we're going to be doing terrariums for the centerpieces, so that's a kind of flower club thing. Yes. And then also, um, we're making these butterflies for decorations, and they're really easy to make, and you can get service hours for making them. And they're right over there, like next to the exit door in those bags, so just pick them up. Yeah, you can get service hours for all of this, which is why you should all help them together. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Today at lunch in Mr. Johnson's room. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, seniors, you will have 11 days to turn in your uh, cages and superlatives. And if you want an extension, come find one of us for some reason, whatever. We'll see if it's time, important time. enough. Yeah, and you gotta still turn in something, even if you want an extension. Come on, and if you want to help with superlatives, tell us. Come on, come on. <laughs> So if you're interested, yes. please come. Even if it's for a few seconds. We're selling winter ball tickets at lunch. You can only get couples tickets um, anywhere but at the door, so get them now. We're always throwing dirty for tickets. Okay, thank you guys for thank you guys for making us feel very welcome. And happy Chinese New Year! Sing yang my love! Tomorrow, F day, um, please tell me so that I can get help doing the line.